Well, good morning, Lionhearts. I was trying to trick you by making you think we were only gonna do one tour. We actually did two. So now we're gonna do the upstairs. Let's go. All right, here we go. Second tour. Hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's Hearst Castle tour. We just wanted to continue it with showing a little bit more, showing you the whole house of Casa Grande right there. So, William Randolph Hearst, he spent some of his fondest childhood memories uh, right at this location, but it wasn't in front of, uh, uh, on the side of La Casa Grande. It was actually on the white open hilltops of his father's ranch. His father, George Hearst, actually it's a farmer from Missouri that came out to uh, try his luck in the gold rush, and it wasn't really working out that well. About eight years of hard work in the gold fields, decides he's going to try the other side of the Sierras on the eastern slope and uh, instantly pays off. He stumbles into the largest vein of silver ever found uh, to this day in the Sierra Nevada. It is the uh, Comstock load. Uh, the silver strike makes him instantly one of the ten wealthiest men in the country. He's being smart with his newfound wealth. He's investing in several other western mining operations. He's also buying land. He uh, buys 40,000 acres here in San Simeon. Three Mexican ranchos were combined together and he got a pretty good deal, about 70 cents an acre on average, which was even cheaper back then. The reason it was so cheap, there was a horrible drought going on at the time. The previous landowners are cattle ranchers that could no longer feed their livestock because of the drought. So uh, George is making uh, good with his new forge and he heads back to Missouri to tend to his mother. She's not doing well physically and while he's there, he starts courting a young neighbor, grew up a couple farms down from George. Her name is Phoebe Apperson. Uh, quite culture for small town Missouri. She spoke fluent French. Uh, she was a elementary school teacher, always trying to learn more about art and culture. Her and George, they fall in love and they actually uh, elope back to the West Coast, 1863. They have their one and only child in San Francisco. It's William Randolph Hearst. So time spent here on his dad's ranch. He loved, uh, uh, as a boy, loved climbing the coastal live oak trees. That's one of two natives left on the hilltop. Uh, he learns how to hunt. They call this spot Camp Hill, and it's one of his uh, favorite places, one of his favorite things to do as a young boy. Also, architecture. 1919, his mother passes away, leaves him the entire family fortune. At this stage of William Randolph Hearst's life, he's doing pretty well. He's a newspaper man on several newspapers, lives in New York City. Uh, while his mother was alive, she would not permit it. She feared that. And so far, feels pretty good in here. <laughs> Some people are surprised okay, I'll take when they first walk through those doors, <laughs> that uh, unfinished rock concrete stairwell, I think throws a few people for a loop. And you are going to hear about uh, unfinished stuff, a lot of it here, 50%. So we do need to stay on the uh, bluish gray uh, tour. Well, all over Europe, but Spain and Italy is what he's really uh, focusing on in that 15th and 16th century, the Renaissance period. And you can even sleep in that is a 16th century carved walnut. Uh, it wasn't married couple, so it's from Italy. So her sitting room in the Doge is sweet. Wow. Ooh. So he calls it the Doge's Suite, inspired by the Doge's Palace at St. Mark's Square in Venice, Italy. Apologize with our scaffolding right smack dab in the middle of our balcony view, but uh, doing a little conservation work on the balcony ceiling. But the uh, Mr. Hurst wanted guests to look out the back balcony and feel like scaffolding. Those are crafted by uh, staff on the hill to the ceilings that form the clover cutout pattern. Those are 15th century Venetian counterfoils, identical to the ones at the courtyard. If you're looking up at the balcony, uh, bring a uh, picture up on your cell phone of the uh, Doge's Palace that it does really look like 
Uh, he, he cut out a little chunk of that, the ability to reposition it right here in the middle of this one here in San Simeon. I don't know what you are seeing. Another Italian is actually a 17th century Italian artist. He's doing a reproduction of it in the 30s and the 40s. And uh, he remembered scoffing at his wife's insistence she was hearing roars of a lion throughout the night. He uh, felt maybe she had one too many glasses. He peeks over the balcony, and, and sure was, enough, oh full grown God. male lion in a cage oh heading uh, back towards uh, Miss Hearst Exotic Zoo, one of the largest privately held exotic zoos in the world. Oh, the female suite. So the bathroom door that you're seeing over here, this is actually carved Spanish, 17th century, uh, with JSO layer on it. It's actually the other half from the door in the first uh, room. You are going to see bathrooms as we progress through the house. These are just a little bit off the beaten path in the rooms. Um, the ceiling, if that looks familiar, that's the other half of the ceiling from the first bedroom. Mr. Hurst, he is chopping antiques things in half once in a while to use twice. and. Uh, not everyone is a fan of how he's uh, treating some of the European antiquity, especially, well, people from Europe. It's 1915. Her name is Mary Davies, aspiring to become an actor. She makes that transition with brilliant success, being one of the highest paid actors in all of Hollywood through the 1930s. Her and Mr. Hurst, they're falling in love and they're not doing a very good job of keeping it a secret, so things are changing in his world. Uh, I don't want to give too much away too soon on our tour, so for the time being, I'm going to stop that thought and let it be or to her cliffhanger for now. <laughs> that uh, we don't actually go on them, but the windows are wide open, so with people with cameras, you should be able to get a great shot. Stop at the end of the uh, hall here, and I'll talk about the views down below uh, of San Simeon Bay, old San Simeon Village, and really the, uh, the front of the Hearst Ranch. So a cloister uh, might be a monastery. The uh, a monk's sleeping arrangement might look similar to this. I'm assuming a little more modest uh, with their interior design than Mr. Hurst is providing here. Uh, and uh, one thing you're going to notice in all three of the rooms when you pass by, there are two beds in each room. And uh, so if you're staying here, probably going to have a roommate. Now, who are some of these people that are single that got invited up here? A lot of times. Might have been a writer from one of his 28 newspapers. Yeah. Maybe perhaps a uh, editor from one of his magazines yeah. came up yeah. to work on a project personally with Mr. Hurst. But uh, a lot of times the people would be staying in here. Uh, I told you about his girlfriend. I forgot to mention she's a little bit younger than Mr. Hurst. And by younger, I mean 34 years younger. And uh, a lot of these uh, young friends of Miss Davies, young actresses of Hollywood, and even though he's living a little bit of a dual life suddenly with a wife, and the kids and the girlfriend still felt a little bit of a moral responsibility to look after the younger guests. So he uh, maybe could uh, walk by, peek in when you had the likes of a Cary Grant, David Devin walk around late in the evening after a few cocktails, peek in their heads in certain rooms and find out who might still be awake. Oh, a library. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Solar power. Yes, yeah, solar. <laughs> ahead of her time. Yeah. If you're wondering if guests ever got tired of walking up and down the very unfinished raw concrete stairways, probably never touched them. Uh, even of staff, probably they're riding up and down in the elevator. It still works. It's from the Otis Elevator Company. Come on into the library. The, the bigger fans are blowing. Richmond, big city. I've gone through corners. I married a West Virginia, so uh, we usually fly into uh, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And although the uh, in-laws moved down to uh, right outside of Orlando, I've 
four daughters. And I think they thought we'd come see them more if they yeah. live right next to Disney World. But uh, they realized that uh, my kids broke their... Uh, being an author, really excited to uh, discover Mr. Hurst's library. And uh, he wanted, well, he was being selfish. He, had a, he wanted that experience to be uh, all to himself, but he had a plan to make that happen. He knew about that 7.30 pre-dinner cocktail hour. It takes place literally right underneath us in the assembly room. And uh, it was required your first night. Guests went every night. It was the pre-social uh, for dinner. So people wanted to be there. And uh, so he waited out 7.30, hoping everyone in the Upster Suites would head down. And that's exactly what happened. Once uh, Mr. Newton actually approached the library, he wrote that he was pleased to find a library uh, that didn't necessarily have books of a collector, but he said books and even magazines he would hope to find in a uh, library of a gentleman's country estate. That may be partially true, but if you guys look around the bookcases, 40, 100 volumes of books, uh, several originals, some are looking for William Shakespeare or little Samuel. Several businesses, 160,000 acres of the northern part of the ranch. It used to be at its peak 250,000 acres. He would recover after uh, uh, World War II, once the uh, United States is brought into the war, uh, he owns newspapers, magazines, TV, radio, uh, mass media. You could probably do pretty well with World War headlines every night, so he would recover. Uh, but uh, sells off a lot of the pots, but he kept the, uh, kept the most special ones. It's not the one in the acrylic case that looks like we're featuring it. One went down low where the lights would hit it, where especially our school groups can see the details of the uh, paintings on the pot. A lot of people think the most significant, by at least age alone, the uh, narrow, tall, narrow one in the southwest corner, that's the oldest. That one is from the 8th century BC, one of the older items on the hilltop, not the oldest. I'll point out an Egyptian piece that's not on this tour, but I'll show everyone how to go see her. Most of you already have, but uh, um, one pot that's not nearly as old, but has probably the most interesting background to it, is a white pot on the English table, 2003. We have a, a big earthquake, a 6.5, a mile and a half in our backyard is the epicenter. Buildings collapsed in Paso Robles, a couple of lives were lost, and uh, we evacuated that day. And uh, uh, Julia Morgan's second and none in earthquake and fire construction, uh, especially for that time period, the building was fine. We were given the go-ahead to show uh, tours the following day by the state, but we were shown less artwork, including this pot, uh, was on the ground shattered and our restoration crew second to none they were able to piece it back together they glued it back together and were able to hide the seam third floor watch your step coming through not much but can't be great you hear me say anything? <laughs> you're right where you're supposed to be I saw the look on your face we're transitioning through I'm just coming up the stairs okay. that's my way okay alright <laughs> hey guys Here's his bedroom. William Randolph Hearst bedroom. room of all and uh, well he's keeping things in proportion he wants it to uh, look like a Spanish or Italian village from that uh, time period things were smaller uh, people built a lot smaller than we're, we're known here in the United States for kind of going big on a lot of things including uh, construction so he's keeping things uh, like you would have seen over in Europe also he's a light sleeper uh, about three and a half to four hours a night and when I say night normally I was seven in the morning till uh, maybe 10 or 11 because he worked very late at night here. He'd uh, start his work day about 12.30 uh, over in his private gothic study working till daylight putting the West Coast newspapers to bed. Uh, he did put his oldest of his antique ceilings above his head in here. This one is actually Spanish 14th century uh, Mujahar style. It's peaked meaning it is high in the middle. He calls it a gothic 
suite, a classic architectural Gothic feature. The room's going to be as tall as it is wide. Another uh, classic architectural Gothic feature, the very long vertical windows that bring a lot of that natural light into the room. Uh, so you can see the orange tile roof down below out that west window. That is the uh, rooftop of Casa Del Mar. Some of you have been on tour already, probably heard Mr. Hurst is living down there. That's where the family's living. Uh, well, the first two years, they're the smallest. Most people have stayed here think of Mary Davies as their hostess. The reason for that, after they separate, he asked his architect to build him his own private Gothic suite here on the third floor. His room under the right, uh, or the, excuse me, the left bell tower if you're facing the ocean. Uh, the bell towers used to be right above the room. They kept growing vertically as well. Mary Davies' new bedroom. It's over uh, just, uh, just beyond us. We're going to walk into that in a second under the right bell tower. Mrs. Hurst's new bedroom just around the corner, about 3,000 miles east <laughs> in New York City. So things are changing. She's a New York girl. Uh, she really likes it there. She's raising the five boys there most of the time uh, anyway. So uh, it's a cordial separation. She actually comes out three years after they separated to uh, play hostess to Winston Churchill, who's here with his brother, son, and nephew. And uh, he writes a, a letter home to his wife, Clementine, saying Mr. Hurst seems like a very nice man. He has two very lovely and charming wives and a complete indifference towards public opinion. The reason he says this, he's hosted to a, a lovely party here on the Friday night by uh, Mrs. Hurst. Uh, Saturday morning, she heads back to New York. Mr. Hurst heads down to Beverly Hills with the Churchills, where they're hosted to another lovely party by uh, Mary Davies. So. Um, they were never here together. Um, um, they weren't friendly, but uh, so if you were wondering how he balanced that thing, uh, uh, 1926 on, he's with Marion Davies, and that's who most people think of as the host, is simply because of the entertainment rooms uh, down on the bottom floor. Those are uh, up and ready to entertain guests late 1925, right about the time him and his wife would separate. Just this room, most rooms, we talked a little bit downstairs, the religious are have been donated to us. It is 1930 year of clothing, but it was donated to us from our living history program where we have donors. Uh, she's a little bit younger than Mrs. Hurst. There is one time, uh, she's very social, that she had a few guests visit her room and uh, come on in. I'll explain what happened. Not nearly as scandalous as it sounds, though. <laughs> Marion Marion Davies room. He wanted these to be twin, uh, since they're both under the bell towers. He wanted the bedrooms to kind of uh, be, be twin rooms in a sense, and he really lucked out finding another uh, a Mojahar style Spanish ceiling. This one's a bit younger. This is a 15th century, uh, about 100 years younger. Look around the room, the religious theme has not gone anywhere. No less than six Madonna with child, tempera paintings, these oil paintings on wood panels, some would say with a generous use of gold leafing. Uh, clear to see Miss Davies wasn't her interior designer, it was uh, Julia Morgan and Mr. Hurst, which they basically, they uh, interior designer of every room here. Uh, they actually did every, they planted every flower, plant, tree uh, on the hilltop as well. So uh, his architect, she wore several hats, not just architect. Um, told you she's very uh, social, she's very outgoing. A lot of people are judging. Uh, Miss Davies before they got here. She's the other woman. It's uh, easy to understand and uh, just being a very gracious hostess. Uh, there was one particular time female gal ladies, they really want to have their favorite dinner gown for that occasion. Uh, staff told Miss Davies about that and she told them please invite every female in today's guests up to my private gothic suite bedroom. Once they arrive she's sitting on the sofa here and uh, invites them in and told them, you know, ladies, I'm always so busy playing hostess here. I really never have uh, just time to sit around and have a little gossip time with the ladies, so I want to take advantage of this time. And since you're all up here, have all these lovely dinner gowns I never get to really properly show off, so I thought it'd be fun to show off some of my dinner gowns. And by the way, if anyone or if all of you would like to wear one of my gowns, I'd be thrilled to see them walk around down in the assembly room 
and the refectory uh, tonight's dinner. She was always doing little things like that to make guests feel more welcome. Uh, all five of his boys, they are very slow to come around to Miss uh, Davies. Ironically, by the time they were young men up here on the hilltop, they kind of took a look around and noticed that uh, most of her friends were the most beautiful young actresses of Hollywood, and suddenly uh, those five boys had a change of heart about Dad's girlfriend. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. This, the next one we're heading into, it's his favorite room. It's his office, the one he definitely spent the most time in. He calls it his private Gothic study. Also, we're going to walk through a couple normal height, uh, the height in the doorways. After about three doors, you're going to notice some very low doors, six feet or above. Start watching your head. Here is her wardrobe closet. Wow, what an office. That's a former employee of Mr. Hurst. He did some writing for uh, some of the newspapers. Uh, this is Mr. Hurst's office. Uh, that's a portrait of Mr. Hurst. Orwin Peck uh, painted it. 31 years old there. He's a pretty young guy right there. Uh, the reason I say that is sweet. She knew he'd never be satisfied with a very little ceiling. He was raised up the roof so he could bring a very large antique ceiling in, which they do, 16th century Spanish, Car pine painted details, a little bit of gold leafing, and then the arches that you can see built in the ceiling. 1945 till 1947, the only two years he's a full time resident. I bet we can squeeze another suite of rooms up here. And uh, uh, lucky for him, he had a very good architect, and they could. Uh, proud to announce in his sitting room, it's a theme room actually, uh, an ode to Egypt. I'll explain that once we're there. And then we're going to go into right under the bell towers. Uh, highest point you can stay here as a guest. He calls it the Celestial Suite. So come on up here. If you like, this is the first time you can literally have a seat. Absolutely. Guys, come through this door here. Watch, there's a little hidden bump there that can be a little sneaky. <laughs> so this is a, a theme room. Normally, to uh, enjoy a theme room in San Luis Obispo <laughs> County, you got to go down to the Madonna Inn uh, in San Luis Obispo. But Mr. Hurst, he does one theme room. He didn't make a habit of it. It's an ode to Egypt. When uh, King Tut's tomb was discovered, or some might even say raided, Mr. Hearst and every other prominent collector around the world, they were taken by Egyptomania. They had to have a piece of Egypt in their collection, and Mr. Hearst would get his in the form of a four-piece sculpture called Sekhmet. She has a head of a lioness, the body of a woman. She is the bloodthirsty protector of the sun god Ra, give her and take her life. But, uh, it is the oldest item on the hilltop segment. I'll point out how you guys can see her once we get out the doors here. Uh, she dates between 3,100 to just shy of 3,500 years old. And uh, there's believed to be uh, over 3,600 uh, of the same pieces in the desert sands around Tut's tomb. Several have been found. They just found two last year, but they're still finding them. So 
Uh, I'll point that out, but this is a uh, kind of an ode to Egypt, Mr. Herschel's love of Egypt. You're also seeing the first non-antique ceiling of the tour. This is built on site by a gentleman named Theo Vanderloo, and uh, he builds all three of the guest house ceilings for Mr. Hurst. Those are inspired by Spanish antique ceilings, but Mr. Hurst wanted those guest house built as soon as possible. Uh, that's why he's using Theo Vanderloo rather than antique ceilings. Up here, uh, kind of a weird arch to this room. And then also next door when we go into the Celestial, being right under the bell towers, it's an octagon shaped room. So he, he didn't mind cutting the ceiling in half once in a while to use twice, but uh, the weird arch in the shape of the room next door probably would have had to alter maybe two or three different antique ceilings to achieve that. So instead, as Theo Vanderloo do this one in an Egyptian theme, it's a wood polychrome gold leafed. Uh, some of the art in the room. Over here on this wall is another French artist named Jerome. And uh, that is actually called Bonaparte at Cairo. And then uh, Jerome would do a follow-up piece uh, behind you here is Bonaparte at the Sphinx. That is Napoleon Bonaparte during his Egyptian campaign. Uh, and then uh, uh, Jerome actually is an architecture from. So come on now. I want you to spend the night here at Hearst Castle. So as you're looking around, uh, you're seeing another Theo Vanderloo ceiling. Uh, this is, uh, for me and a few guides, it's our favorite of the Theo Vanderloo ceilings. Uh, most that you can see, like in the guest cottages, are similar to this, where it's a, uh, uh, inspired by <coughs> Spanish antique ceilings. <coughs> and uh, the reason it's one of our favorites, we don't see it as much. Normally we're showing the opposite celestial, but uh, with the summer heat, once it gets to the uh, level we're at, that becomes unbearable. You can feel it's pretty stuffy up here anyway, but that uh, south room is worse. 200 feet above sea level, another 137 feet above the main terrace. Um, there's a, this is a twin. The other room is identical. There's a, the ceilings have a few uh, minor details, but the furniture is identical. Hedda Hopper, who was Hollywood's premier gossip columnist through the heart of the 1930s, felt as if she stayed inside a jewelry box. She didn't know what made her feel more special. It's gold. Uh, the gold room and its gold walls, or she talked about she loved being out on the uh, northwest balcony watching the sun set mm. over the ocean in the summer, and the uh, fog would roll in uh, as the sun was setting, and it would roll in just to the base of the hilltop, or just before things poking out of the fog, the three guest cottages and La Casa Grande. She says it was as if the castle was floating on its own gray sea of mist. Uh, well, you can feel it does get warm, and this cloister that was about as stuffy as this. The open cloisters on the north side, that's the one without uh, having to store windows. He was saying this was Hedda Hopper's favorite room. Hedda Hopper said it was like a jewelry box. All right, heading back down. If I was a guy, I would try my luck. 